Hi everybody. Today what I would like to do is a quick overview of my new off-road trailer. Uh, it's, a, it's the X-Venture XV2 model from Schutt Industries. Uh, you can find more information about, on this at schuttindustries.com or if you just Google uh, XV2 trailer you'll be able to get information on it. Uh, one of the things that I like is a lot of these off-road trailers that I've seen that I liked are built in Australia or South Africa. And while they're nice units, it's pretty much totally impractical to import them to the United States. This trailer is actually built right here in Clintonville, Wisconsin, which is less than 100 miles from where I'm talking to you right now. Starting on the passenger side, there are three different input ports that are all waterproofed. One is for the input from the solar panel when you're charging your electrical system. One is for an output for 120 volt if you're running anything that needs to plug into the trailer. And the third is the input for charging the system. If you're not charging off of solar and you have access to electrical, you can charge your battery system off of 120 volt household current. And here is one of the two parking brakes. You activate it by pushing forward. There's one on the passenger side and there's one on the driver's side. Opening up the front cabinet, which is lockable, this has room for three separate items. The first is the power distribution center, which includes my extra battery as well as my solar charger and solar controller, which is from Goal Zero. There's also room for two five gallon jerry cans full of water. Uh, these are water as opposed to fuel because you do have electrical in here and mixing electrical and gasoline is not a good idea. The third thing that's in this forward storage compartment is my ARB refrigerator freezer. It's a 52 and a half quart refrigerator freezer and if you look here there's a control panel it's not plugged in right now but the control panel allows you to turn it off and then adjust the temperature um, anywhere from 50 degrees down to as low as 10 degrees. So this is a legitimate refrigerator and or freezer. There's also the storage area for your 20 pound propane tank. And then this hitch is a little bit unusual. This hitch rotates 360 degrees. The idea is if you have the Jeep on extremely rough terrain, or the trailers on rough terrain and one of them starts to lean you want to be able to rotate this so that you don't risk flipping the Jeep if you flip the trailer or flipping the trailer if you flip the Jeep. It mates up with a two inch receiver hitch. The ears go right here and then you can rotate 180 degrees or more as well as spinning 360 degrees. So it's a very it's a very flexible, very durable system. Here are the heavy duty tow chains. It actually has a separate emergency brake activator that you attach to your vehicle. If this pulls out, this will activate the electronic vehicle brakes. And then this is the plug that goes into your vehicle. Um, this for a, a 1500 pound trailer uh, you typically don't see electronic brakes, but because it's an off-road trailer, in order to maximize controllability, they actually have electronic brakes on here. So this runs the turn signals, and the emergency brakes, and your running lights, as well as the brakes for the trailer. Over here, we have the other parking brake. Now we're going to move around to the driver's side, and I'm going to show you some of the options on the driver's side. We have our Foxwing awning. I'll have a full detailed review of this that I'll, have, that I'll put up in a little while. But this awning uh, is roughly eight feet long and when it extends, it extends all the way from this side of the trailer all the way around to the back of the trailer to give you 270 degrees of coverage. And uh, when you include the poles, it gives you lots of space to sit and prepare meals, especially if the, even if the weather is inclement. On both sides, They've got the fenders, and the fenders are strong enough so that you can easily stand on the fenders. Um, there's absolutely no flex to them. You can pretty much walk on the fenders, you can stand on the fenders, you can put two people on the fenders if you need to, but that's the type of strength that's built into this trailer. Here is the wheel 
and the tire combination that it comes with from the factory. Uh, these are 7.5 by 16 light truck tires. One of the nice things about this, this trailer comes with interchangeable hubs. I can switch these hubs out to a Jeep hub which will allow me to run the same exact wheel and tire combination that I have on my Jeep so it minimizes the need to carry an extra tire. For right now, I'm just going with the factory tires because they're completely adequate. As you move along the side here, there are two spots where bars go in and this supports the cooking countertop as well as the stove which sits over here and the sink which sits over here. There's a faucet that goes into the fender right here that I'll show you uh, a little bit later and you have hot and cold running water. Both in the front and in the rear, you've got military grade tie downs and anchor points. So you can pretty much anchor anything that you need to. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up the countertop and the cooking area so you can see how, what that looks like. Now that we have it set up, we have our cooking and our prep surface counter here. So here we've got three separate burners three separate uh, propane burners here. We've got a large surface area that you can cook, that you can prep materials on. And then we've also got hot and cold running water. Thanks to the water heater that we have in the bed, and I will show you how that works. On the bottom of the trailer, there are two 11 gallon water, water tanks that can be filled from a fill part on the passenger side. Now what I would like to do is move on to the back of the trailer and show you some of the things that we have in the back of the trailer. On the back of the trailer, we have another two inch receiver hitch, which you wouldn't use to pull anything, but what you can use this for is if you're carrying bicycles or you want to put a small cargo rack back here, you can just use this two inch receiver hitch. Underneath, there are two drop down stabilizer legs that you can put in place if you need to stabilize the trailer because you're loading something. Now in the bed, we have a drop down removable tailgate and this tailgate is strong enough that you could put a couple of people on it uh, without any problem at all. It's also removable if you decide that you want to take the tailgate off for some reason. The bed that you have here is 89 inches long, it's 59 and a half inches wide, and it's 49 inches in between the wheel wells. So you could fit um, a four by eight sheet of plywood laid flat in the trailer. This is actually a good place to talk about this. This is a very, very heavy duty trailer. This trailer, um, the curb weight is 1,190 pounds and the maximum payload is 2,315 pounds. So with this trailer, it's designed to be heavy duty enough that you could put over a ton of material in the trailer and still drive it. That's the other reason for the brakes, the electronic brakes, is because you could load it so heavily that you might, at 3,500 3, pound gross vehicle weight, it's heavy enough that you might want to have electronic brakes on it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that you have a hot water heater, which is right here. This is a Camp Chef Triton hot water heater. Um, it's hooked up to the battery, which, which lights it. It's also hooked up to the propane and the water tanks, which allow you to have, as I said earlier, hot water whenever you need it. In back here, you've got LED brake lights and running lights, in addition to LED uh, backup lights. These lights can be triggered from the control panel up front in the storage box, just to give you a little bit of camp lighting. On top here, we have a James Farood uh, Grand XXL Evo tent. Uh, it's a hard shell tent. All you do is you release four clamps, the tent will pop up, and then you've got a ladder that sits on the, on the passenger side of the trailer. It's a great, great way to camp in this. Um, when, my, when, when my sons and I uh, went up to Drummond Island, this is what all three of us slept in and there was plenty of room. So on the passenger side, back here, there's pretty much the same thing that you had on the driver's side with the exception of the uh, fact that there's no countertop on the passenger side. But the one other thing the passenger side does have is just in front of the wheel up here, it's got another uh, water plug that you can get hot and cold running water out of that's designed for a shower. And I've got some pictures uh, with the shower stall set up 
and it works very well. We've tried it a couple of times. It's nice to be able to take showers even when you're out in the woods. Oh. One of the things that I wanted to mention was that uh, the suspension system on this trailer is a torsion spring suspension which allows you to have 18 inches of ground clearance so as a result pretty much anywhere that the Jeep goes I can tow this trailer. Some people talk about the concern about how wide this trailer is. I like the width of it because it means that I can always check the trailer in my rear view mirrors so I know exactly where the trailer is going and with the width of the wheels the trailer wheels are pretty much going over whatever the Jeep wheels go over. So some advantages to the size of this trailer even though it looks big it actually handles trails very well. In order to close up the bed, this has a hard tonneau cover, which all you do is roll it forward, and then the individual panels latch down, so you can securely lock this trailer. You can have this rack at two different heights. There's about a nine inch difference uh, if you have it in the down position, or if you have in the up position. The reason that you have the up position is this trailer is also capable of carrying a full-size ATV or even dirt bikes and so they wanted to have a raised position so that you could get the ATV in underneath the tent and you wouldn't have to worry about having it interfere or reducing the flexibility of the trailer. Well everyone that is my quick overview of my new X-Venture XV2 trailer. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. As I mentioned, I will be doing some reviews on the individual components of the trailer uh, in the future. And as always, have fun, be safe, and hey, take your kids camping. Have a wonderful day, everybody.